The other thing I want to uh, add in there, once you are aware and crystal clear on being aware of where you are, why you are, where you are, where, where the pressure points are coming from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now we do what I like to call is cube it out or chunk it, right? So instead of trying to eat the whole elephant, right? Let's break this elephant down into smaller cubes, smaller pieces, so that we can now manage them a lot better. And I think people sometimes are guilty of wanting to just, you know, kill the elephant right off the top, right? And that's not realistic. You have to actually take the time to, to, to break it down. It's like eating a really nice steak, right? You can't just stick the whole steak, shove it in your face, right? And eat the thing at one time. What do you do? You take the steak knife and you cut it down into more manageable pieces. Same principle should apply here when we're talking about getting our head around all of these pressure points and things that are happening in our lives that we are uncertain about. Why are we uncertain? So ask those types of questions. What outcomes would I like to see out of this situation? And I think that's another piece of it. And I want to talk about that next is that, that visualization, if you want to call it that because we focus so much on the uncertainty piece and why we are uncertain and the negativity around, well, this could happen or that could happen. Or if I do this, I'll open myself up to that. Well, we don't give equal time and equal justice to, well, if I open myself up to this, this wonderful thing could happen too, right? So that's the visualization piece that I wanna talk about. So Chris, how about you share a little bit about that? Cause I know that's been one of the things where you talk about there's good on the other side of this? Well, I think what, what I have to do is see it not from today's perspective, but in in time, I don't know how I would say this, timed increments. So what's this going to look like in, a, in, a, in two weeks? What's this going to look like in a month? What's this going to look like in six months? What's this going to look like in a year? Now, it's a double-edged sword. Because what happens is sometimes you get a little, sometimes you can get a little ahead of yourself and you, and what I, I find for myself is I need to pull back. It's great to peak. It's great to peak forward, but I think I had to short, shorten that runway a little bit, the, the runway of expectations. And, and that's probably been my biggest challenge and, and, and somewhat my saving grace right now is that I've had to adjust my own expectations and consequently i'll be able to work with the people that i work with to adjust what their expectations may or may or may not be so i've been having those discussions and i actually made a decision this week because the clarity started to come back i mean if if we were doing this podcast last week i was completely hair on fire i was deflated i didn't feel good about myself as you know, what I was bringing to the table, I really felt a square peg round hole type mentality. And it took me a lot. I mean, I fought with myself. I mean, I fought myself a lot. And then I, of course you keep rat, you know, it's like wrestling an alligator. You know, you, it's, it's not a fight you're necessarily going to win. You know, you'd be lucky, actually be lucky to come out of it in one piece. But my reality was I had to readjust my expectations first within myself. And then I had to talk to the people that I work with about it and gauge how they felt about it. And basically what I was looking for was buy-in. I was looking for buy-in slash support. And I came to the conclusion that I may not know this material because of the depths of this. And I can't, you know, it's hard to really kind of give you a visual picture of how deep and how expansive this this is, but just think electrical technician, electricity, power, current, voltage, amperes, you know, all this different stuff, circuits in parallel, you know, I mean, capacitors in parallel, resistors. I mean, I mean, it's just the, the, the list is longer than both of my arms put together and add my legs on too. So, but just understanding that, that this is the part of where you're kind of doing that, that mental dance in your head. Like I'm doing this for the long haul. This isn't something that it's just for two months or three months. I'm trying to literally turn this into an actual career moving forward that I'm, I have stated to myself personally that I'm hoping to get 10 years out of. 
That's the goal for me. And then I'm done. So with that being said, I had to go back and adjust that, you know, when, you know, it's kind of like going to the NBA and realizing you need to spend some time in the G league, you know, I need to spend some time in the minors working on repetitions, working on process, working on understanding this conceptually what it is I'm involved in. So that's been kind of a, something that is kind of really, I've been able to somewhat start to anchor myself again to, and by no means, does that mean there's no pressure? Does that, by no means, does that mean that I don't have the clock isn't necessary. The clock isn't necessarily not running because uh, it is running, but just making it so that it is, it has become manageable for me because I was, I felt like I was engulfed in, in, in flames for a while. And to a certain degree, I still am, but I have literally been working, reworking my attack plan to, to be something more manageable for, for me, because if, if it, you know, it's the old adage, if you can't save yourself, you can't save someone else. And, you know, I've had some people reach out to me on a personal level, looking for some help from me over the last couple of weeks. And the first time I, when I first got the call, I was like, wait a minute, well, for one, I'm not, that's not my job to save somebody. I'm, my job is just, I owe it to me first and foremost, but I had to like, just pull back, you know, and then the power of no came, came into the equation where I basically had to say, nope, I'd, I'd love to help you, but I cannot based on everything. And I said, and the crazy part was that all this stuff we've discussed over the past has kind of come to play over these last couple of weeks. And it was like, it's just, no, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'll give you a small cursory uh, explanation as to why I can't help you, but I'm not going to sit here and burn through a bunch of my own currency and energy trying to explain it to you because you came to me. I didn't come to you. You know, I think one of the key words you hit on that is, is being realistic, you know, and, and whatever the, uh, expectation is, and, and and even as you have your outcomes happen uh, along the journey, being realistic about where you are in the process, uh, where, you, where you have shortfalls and shortcomings, because we will all always have those things. Things will not always live up to the expectation that we've placed in our brain, right? That That is going to be the, the nature of the beast, as, as you might say. So checking yourself, quote unquote, being realistic, I think is an important piece of it. That's all tied to the awareness piece, being realistic. And then, as I said, taking an opportunity to break things down and break things down into smaller manageable pieces. So that way you can uh, essentially consume them in a more manageable way so that you're not overwhelmed by it. You know, you're not sitting there to oh, get to all this at one time, right? Exactly, because you're, you're trying to do too much. You're trying to eat too much at once. So the, the exact same principle apply, applies. What I want to talk about now, is, and you hit on this too, and you, it really is moving to the next thing. And that's talking about confidence, right? Because that is, as you were just saying, a week or so ago, if you had to sit here in this chair and have the same conversation. So you're probably at that point now where you probably feel like you're beginning to turn a corner. There's a different level of confidence, et cetera, just based on where you are now, because you have started to sort some things out. You have been open and honest and been to, hey, look, this is a lot. I need some time. I need to compartmentalize. I need to do this, that, the other thing, right? So how has that started to help build your confidence and your vision as you move forward? Well, I think a couple of things have happened. For one, I've slowed it down in a certain respect, backed it up a little bit and really tried to, like you said, attack it in smaller bites. Yep. There are the, the beautiful thing about where we are from a informational standpoint, from a technology standpoint, there's a lot of information out there on anything you, anything you desire. I mean, obviously we're talking about professional stuff today. More important. I think a lot of people would, you know, obviously uncertainty bleeds into your personal life. But the reality is we're really kind of talking about what's going on in our professional worlds because that affects you most. That, that affects how you live. That affects your, your, your bank balance. That affects a lot of things. You know, you know, they say money makes, 
money doesn't money doesn't cure all but it sure does make it a little more comfortable make it a little you know if you got it it makes it a little more easier for you but really like i said a lot of you know some of this is born out of my pride part of this is born out of the fact that i understand that i'm i'm a, on cer in certain respects i'm a smart guy i may not be the smartest guy in the room which is the other part of this that i have to keep my keep in mind i'm in room with some real i mean i'm in i'm in the room with electrical engineers they spit this stuff out you know what i mean it's i mean it's just like for breakfast so trying to manage that part of it and not feel inadequate you know i think a lot of people get when it comes to a confidence le confidence thing it it it's it's how you make yourself feel and you can do certain things to yourself that'll make yourself not feel like, like you should feel if you're your as i say when i'm my confident self you know you know the difference you know i was a little to go into the personal side, I was a little disappointed in myself last weekend. We were when we played golf, and because I had I clearly I had a lot on my mind because I couldn't focus on the thing that was in front of me, which was golf. I should have that was the one thing that I really wanted to focus on, but I had these other things buzzing around my head, and it made my experience a little bit mixed. And what it one of the things that it did tell me was more practice is required. You got to just keep practicing, keep practicing and keep practicing. And sometimes it's going to, it's going to translate immediately and, and visibly. And sometimes it's, it's not, we all go through what we go through to get where we need to go. And like I said, I was trying to, I, I think part of it is you, you try to juggle too many things. I was trying to juggle too many things and it just wasn't working out. And I had to go, you have to go back and revisit those experiences. Um, I had to come to the conclusion that I had allowed this thing to take me out of some of my routines and my habits. You know, like I wasn't going, I had missed a bunch of gym days uh, because I thought if I studied, you know, it'd be better for me. Well, no, yeah, I mean, studying a little bit more is probably great, but don't all of a sudden stop everything else you got going on in your everyday because it all it all plays a part in your day to day existence and your in the day to day successes that you're looking for. Everything you do, I'm a gym guy. I have to go to the gym.